Hello everyone, this is Saturday afternoon and I just took Pina to the um, farmer's market this morning and he really barked a lot so now I think that he should behave with us to go through this webinar. So today's webinar we're talking about what? Tax around fairy friends. So introducing Peanut. Hello Peanut. Can you look at the camera instead of the treat on the table? That's what he's looking at folks. If you ever wonder why Peanut is here because I have a treat right in front of my table. So he's focusing on that. So let's go ahead um, get introducing um, introducing you to our website and also our YouTube channel. You know, we do these uh, webinars every Saturday and whatever we did here, we put that in, uh, in our YouTube channel so you actually would find them if you just type into, uh, you know, today's um, webinars keyword like, you know, tax around fairy friends or you can type into uh, hobbies uh, hobby versus business. So those are uh, keywords that you can find today's video. So let me show you uh, with what I have here. Um, you will see that this is our YouTube channel, right? You saw our YouTube channel and I would like you to subscribe. You know how subscription uh, from you really helps people to get to notice our webs uh, to notice our webinars. And our webinars is not, I know it is not super entertaining, but it is super understandable. So we actually deliver uh, tax knowledge to you in a very uh, simple way. We don't have big words here. And I myself, English is my second language. So I never will pretend I speak jargons because I don't. So with that said, my explanation to you, it is not only simple, but also practical because I have been in this field for 30 years. So it is a long time to gather uh, experience uh, for uh, one's career. We also have our website right here, communitycpa.com. And if you ever want to make appointment with us and uh, you know, you can check on our calendar, book your appointment right here, folks. You can go to appointment and then the partners will come up. These are partners we have in our firm and we each one of us specialize in a certain area so you can look at our uh, description of what we do and then book us for the appointment. So without further delay, let's go get into uh, the peanut business, right? So I have peanut and I have been, um, um, you know, I have been with peanut for what, five, six years? So he has, uh, he has traveled with me all over the place. I go, and this is a miniature poodle, um, very, um, very mild towards to human, but if he meet another dog and he become a little monster. So I think that part probably need to be trained so that he can be friendly with other dogs. But let's go with our, um, with our PowerPoint. So that would guide me so we, I don't talk too much about Peanut, even though I just, I, I love Peanut. So, and he always keep me company here. Tax around furry friends. And before we do, before we talk about what we're really aiming to accomplish, I always want to introduce myself and also giving a chance to brag about the firm and the things that we do here, right? So. Peanut is getting restless. Let me give him a treat so he can be he can be nicer. Okay, so I am the CEO and a partner um, managing partner for Community CPA. So our firm is um, medium sized CPA firm. We did start back in 1998 with one client, one person, myself, and now we have about 40 uh, staff members, professionals. And we have over 10,000 clients and four um, physical locations. And of course, we have clients all over the country just because our present on YouTube. There are people out of, you know, uh, there's concentrated uh, people who are viewing our videos, like in California and in New Jersey. These are areas that we see a lot of clients coming in because they saw our video and they felt that we are the right firm to help them. And with that, I also want to mention to you that I am an author. 
I wrote my first book in 2019. It's called Appointment with Ying at 8 a.m. And I also finished, just finished, and it's going to publish this year. The second book is called Appointment with Ying at 10 a.m. And the 8 a.m. is how to start business. The 10 a.m. is a book about how to grow your business. But of course, I do have a plan to write two more books. One is 2 p.m. And I call that merger and acquisition because when you get into a certain level in your business, that is something you can't help. You will meet and you will have to um, you know, come up with strategy, whether you do it or not. And are you going to sell it so be done with, or you are going to expand? If you expand, is merger acquisition the right thing to do? So that will be my third book, 2 p.m. And I am planning to write the fourth book. It is 6 p.m. That title will be Retiring from Your Business. Trust me, I don't have any idea how to go about that yet because I myself are not there. And right now, uh, someone was asking me, so you, you must have some ideas for that book. And I said, yes, I have an idea. It's one page, two letters is no. So the retirement piece is, is literally a no right now. But I know I would come up with something very meaningful because the retirement for our generations is not the same as our parents. So we're not looking at it completely uh, go away from the active business world if you are a business owner but you're looking at ways to utilize the good part of your body part right if your brain is sharp you do something if your arms leg is is good you do something but when people get get taught get older there are certain things that you just have limitation so that book um it, it will take some time for me to come up but this is the plan for the new books that I'm introducing to you. And also, in our before our webinar, we always talk about responsibilities. But please make sure you know that we don't take any responsibility of free seminars because we um, definitely things are changing, rules are different. So uh, when you view our videos, just be sensitive to the timestamp, knowing that it's new. Uh, come out, but some of those tax rules, regulations, and didn't really change, but some do change a lot. So just be aware of that. So now you see a happy couple with a puppy. Isn't that uh, a picture of you? A lot of you are that way, right? And um, so I want to say, you know, our, our next slide just simply state that paths are not our dependents. They are not. So the survey by um, American Pet Products Association had revealed that the owner of the pads uh, in the United States spends over 75 billion on their animals in 2019. This is right before pandemic. After pandemic, that number doubled. That is how many people are getting into fairy friends situation and we're purchasing things, we're spending money no different from where spending money purchasing things for the kids um, but they are not our dependent right there there are liability and they are the money you have to spend and with with that said you want to say that when you have a furry friend you really are looking at um you know spending money on them but they may not bring you any tax benefit okay so but that's not for all the cases Sometimes they do bring tax benefit. Generally speaking, none of the peanut, my, my puppy's name, and right here, his name is peanut, and um, none of the peanut expenses are tax deductible if it is personal. So no matter how lovely peanut is, and he cannot be my dependent, right? And But he is my personal expense and the liability. So I am, in reality, he's dependent because I'm just having too much fun with him. In certain circumstances, though, peanut expenses can become business expense and reduce your taxable income. So you might just sitting on this sentence goes, oh, you know, really? How would that be? So let's explore that. All right. So I think peanut is getting restless and he wants to get his tree. <laughs> so he went down there. That's okay. So let me um, 
lead into that discussion. So before I before I lead you to a discussion of deduction, where we say that oh yeah, you can deduct your expenses uh, if you have peanut, and I want to introduce this not new concept but is very well known uh, in the in the business world as hobbies versus business. So a lot of times. Um, when you, especially when you get audited, the IRS, the IRS auditors could conclude that it's not your business, it's a hobby. So how, how that come about? Let's just understand the difference between hobby and business by IRS words, by IRS standards. Hobbies are activity that are completed for recreation without the intention of making money. Without intention of making money. Am I, I have peanut. Am I going to make money out of peanut? Is it possible that I make some profit out of having peanut? No, right? There, there really, you can't think of anything. I mean, yeah, I, I spend money on him, but I don't really have, uh, you know, this, this is a hobby. I don't have a purpose or I couldn't see myself uh, to make money out of peanut. And then the IRS define a hobby as a person's side project that happens to earn money while the business is activity where the owner intended to yield profit. Did you see that difference? So, you know, maybe you are a stamp collector and you, you do these things. You know, in the olden days, there's a lot of them, right? And you, you collect that in your spare time, you have a full-time job, and occasionally you make some money, and that is not a business. But let's say you have a, you, you're just operating a collection, like the, the punk shop kind of collection business, then suddenly you are making money as a purpose. So that is where in IRS eyes, that is a business. And a hobby, the pros, for people who say, oh, I have a hobby, what is the, what is the benefit of saying that? You know, really, there, the only benefit is that when it is not a business, there is no pressure. And a business has tremendous pressure because the only way you get into the business was because you wanted to make money. If you are in the business and you are not making money, you will fold. The business won't go on. It is impossible for someone to make loss every year to continue that business. But that is not equal. You lose money, that's not equal to your taxable income is zero. There's a lot of um, uh, IRS regulations and the things you can take advantage, even though you made money, but with you know bonus depreciation and things like that or tax credit that you got from tips and that those kind of things can make your tax liability to be zero but that doesn't mean that you did not make money you still made money just that your money somehow with all the tax regulations and it is uh, granted to not pay taxes for that year you don't need to pay tax for that year so making money is still the purpose then on the 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 uh, the disadvantage, the cons of having a hobby is that none of your expenses is deductible. Peanut cannot the money I spend on peanut, the insurance and everything is not deductible because it is a hobby. But if let's say you raise peanut to make money and you got a way to make money and that insurance expenses and everything become deductible. Right? So hobby is just, you can't deduct any cost you have on it. But if you have a copy hobby income, you do have to report that. It's on Schedule 1 for, 10, for 1040. But expenses you cannot deduct. Now that was taken away. And the small businesses though, the ability you will make money and you can deduct your expenses, even if the money you made is smaller than the expenses you spend, you can deduct the losses. So that's really the fundamental difference between the hobby and the business, right? And it is easy for IRS to think that it is hobby. Let me tell you why it is easy. And you are actually running your business under sole proprietorship under single member LLC. So you, you, you literally are, um, you know, 
making your literally are doing your tax return with this schedule C on there and with peanuts name on it and you are deducting the food the insurance the medical bill and whatever you spent and you had a loss and that is what IRS watching for IRS would come in to your audit with for your 1040 and it can decide on that for you this is not a business is a hobby so file Schedule C to deduct your pad expenses, but also has no income. That is easy for that conclusion. And you did not have a company for it, which I mean is you did not form a corporation. You did not have a separate, you did not have an LLC around it. You're just like running at a sole proprietorship. You're asking IRS to decide for you whether that is a hobby or it is a business. So, and with, uh, you know, when you get audited, if you come through with too much joy out of the peanut, the auditor did not see the purpose for business, but all they see is your enjoyment, then that is a tattoo for hobby, right? You are just enjoying it, you don't care whether you make money or not. When talking to you, you did not show that your peanut life is planned, organized, carried out in the business-like manner. You did not even register your peanut or train your peanut to certain good use. You did not have intention to make money out of peanut. So all of these things, the auditor will come through. Did you train peanut for something? And, you know, for example, in, in one of our clients operates a mental counseling uh, company and inside of that company they have us uh, they have a puppy they have a, a dog just like peanut a medium size and you know it's in the clinic but this animal is trained to comfort patient so it is therapy dog it is dog that they use to, to calm down the children when they come in. So there is a reason for them to have that dog in the clinic. So now, puppies, uh, you know, peanut actually have food, insurance, all of these expenses. What happened to those expenses? It's business expense, right? So those are not even uh, planned out. Um, you know, you, you didn't really make any money and you didn't have a special training to claim a puppy to claim your pet as uh, your business expense that's a that's a stretch that not um it's not even reasonable right and to your auditors it is a, a leisure activity conducted in your spare time for recreational so hobby income is reported but a hobby expense is not allowed to be so I just want you to know. But of course, we also want to cover like um, a dog like Peanut. Can it really be a business expense? The answer is yes. And I listed several things on here to give you ideas of dogs in business. So how could they be in business? They, they can be a guide dog for vision impaired people. You see those ones, right? And the therapy animals, you know, the you know, the bird can be a therapy animals, cat can be a therapy animal, as long as but therapy animals is not what you just name your dog a therapy dog. No. They need to get training. You want to get that certificate and you also have a business that related to use this therapy animals for conducting your business, right? Um, you know, of course raising assistance dogs, you may be a breeder or dog shelter <clears throat> you what you do is to raise those dogs to provide assistance to handicapped people so that could be um, a useful business to do security dogs farm dogs farm dogs of course is part of the farm expenses and so you can animal internet um, you know movie stars this is like the grumpy uh, the grumpy cat right um, actually that grumpy cat it is an internet star. So getting the, the cat on the video and the posting things, so that is a business expense. Um, so dog trainer is another one. Dog shelters, a modification made to facilities and a home for dogs that is in business. 
and raising your dog for business and it would allow you to deduct everything related to your dog. So, you know, one of the pictures I, you know, I found on the internet, this gentleman is working and the dog is sitting by him. If he is a handicapped person, for example, with emotional issues, and this dog is certified for, um, you know, therapy dog, and then everything related to this therapy dog, it is either business expense or is, men, uh, is a medical expense, right? Because it is part of the condition for someone's medical condition to get better. And the service and the working dog, service and the working dog, service dog will likely have to be trained and certified. So this is where the difference is. You can claim your dog. You know, I know in Iowa, in California, it's a lot more open. But in Iowa, if you want to take your dog to a restaurant to eat with you, and the, you know, a lot of time the restaurant owner will ask you whether your dog is a service dog. And you say uh, yes or no. The yes answer means that the dog is being trained and certified to help to treat certain uh, illness. So you want to make sure that you got that certification. I know now you can actually register the dog on the internet for emotional support dogs. Those dogs do not require training. So sometimes um, uh, certain organizations don't recognize those dogs as a companion for illness. They, you know, even for the airline, they don't have to allow you to take it just because uh, it is emotional support dog, but a lot of airlines do. So those are things growing in progress. I think the more people are um, claiming the dogs as emotional support dog, so the treatment will come through from, from private organization all the way up to the government. So now if you say that he's my emotional support dog, so I'm going to deduct that on my Schedule A for medical insurance, for medical expenses, is that okay or not okay? I think if you don't have a doctor's, uh, you don't have a doctor's diagnose to say that you need this dog to be normal, otherwise you go out to shoot people, and if you don't have that, it is hard to um, qualify for the medical expense deduction. But if you do have those kind of notes from the doctor, and that can be articulated, can be submitted to IRS, you know, also when you taking on certain tax positions, for example, you want to deduct all your dog food to schedule A medical expenses, and you're not sure whether that's right or wrong, you actually can, you know, uh, submit to IRS to get the answer directly from IRS. You can try to call IRS, just write down the, the person will answer your call, and he or he, she or he would have the, the ID number as an IRS employee. That ID number is your free ticket. You want to write it down because if this person give you a wrong answer, you did your taxes based on that answer, you have that ID number to supply to the auditor, you will get you will get by without problem. But um, not knowing who talked to you and you just say that I called the IRS, they told me that I can do this, that's not good enough. That's not a, a proof. So you want to make sure when you talk to IRS, you always have a pen and paper ready. You're always going to write down that ID, that who you talk to, okay? And uh, movie star dogs, <laughs> that those are really, really good one, right? Movie star dogs. And, you know, those are the dogs. Um, they are stars in YouTube channel or TikTok. They're, you know, I saw a dog um, TikTok video. It was so amazing. And this guy was eating dumplings and the dog wants one and but when he eats dumplings he actually dumped the dumplings in the vinegar and then eat it right so he gave a dumpling to the golden retriever the dog the dog won't eat it and the dog was uh, hinting with his chin saying the vinegar the vinegar so then he dipped the dumpling in the vinegar, gave it to the dog, and he ate it right away. It was so funny. So those are movie stars on the internet, on YouTube channel, on TikTok, and raising that dog and making money from YouTube channel and the TikTok, that's your income. 
and your expenses can be the training for your dog and the food, the insurance, all of that coming in as a business. So you may ask me that, well, should I just do that on my uh, 1040 and as a sole proprietor? Uh, my answer is no. You want to take away that debate between hobby and the business. The most effective way to take away that debate is to form a corporation and get all of your income and your expenses under S corporation. I say S because number one, it is corporation. Number two is S, so it's passed through the income or expenses to your 1040. So let's say in the first year, you just spent too much money training the dog and that you made less and you spend more, then that's okay. The loss can be going into your 1040 to deduct your other income. So that's why 1120S and the S corporation is actually the best um, tax structure for any businesses that uh, come through uh, has this gray area of hobby and business hard to divide. So don't even try to do that under 1040 because your auditor would not understand hobbies and the business on your behalf. They have their own opinions, their own trainings, so they could easily deny all of your expenses and tax you on income so you just lose on the business and also lose on the taxes right not a good deal not a good deal so this is the movie star of uh, a dog that i saw on the internet and this dog actually can um can jump to catch uh frisbees in a very high distance so the the, I think it's a TikTok would show how he flies and it would have a slow motion to catch the Fisbee. And then I saw the subscribers like over a million. So he makes money out of that. So that would be his movie star and he'll make money. And there are also deductions that you, you can deduct it, but you don't have to be in business with Peanut. And so non-business but deductible, there's two things I want to mention. Number one is the uh, moving expense. This one right now is limited to armed force, active, um, the active armed force. So if you are um, veterans um, still, in, um, still in active duty, and when you move around and you can fill up 3903 to pay for the transportation of your dogs and your parrot and your cat and things like that. And the other one to deduct, but it's also it's not business related, it is the nonprofit side. You know, the animal short, short, uh, shelters, sometimes they would look for host families to put the dog in your home. So when you do that, the expenses you have is treated as a donation. So then you would have that as part of your donation and you just need to know the shelter's EIN number, the name, so you calculate all of what you spend, including insurance, food and everything, and then put that as a, uh, as a, a, charitable, doc, a charitable donation on your Schedule A. So those are deductions without in business with your with your dog but that dog has to be um you know you have to be raising that dog for uh the shelter right cannot be yours like the peanut i have I, she's not the peanut is not a shelter dog it's mine so um it, it is not really qualified for charitable donations and the last slides i have here is I want to give you a grant application opportunity here, and you can get 2,500 to 5,000 for making your, um, making the dog in the workplace. So if you have a workplace where having a dog would be beneficial, and then you can actually apply this grant and to get assistance from um, this, uh, this Cesar, is actually a brand name for the cat for the dog food. You probably remember seeing them. They come in with a little um, 
uh, I don't know what can what breed. It's a small dog. It's a it's a dog picture with a Caesar, and that's the the brand they they have. So this um, dog food manufacturer is putting out this grant to support people making dogs are a part of our work environment. So I uh, want you to know that so you can definitely apply. The, the application deadline is July 28th, so don't forget, if you are interested, just please make sure you take a snapshot of this page, then go, to, um, go on to search for that. All right, so today, and I really wish that I could get Pina to come up to say bye to all of you, so, but I don't, couldn't find him. Uh, he's somewhere. Peanut, are you somewhere? Can you come over and uh, to yeah to say bye? And this is our this is our last slide for our webinar, and we always have it at three o'clock. Thank you, Grace. Look at that. Look at Peanut is here. Um, this Peanut, and he just looked for his food. Um, Peanut is happy to be with me, and uh, I am his dependent. And I cannot deduct to him because he's not my business. He is literally a hobby. So I hope that you find uh, this webinar is uh, is you know meaningful, in informative to you. Just in case you want to get into breeding business and uh, thinking that is can you know I do know breeders who makes very good money. Uh, do, especially during the pandemic time. So it is not like a business doesn't make money. It makes good money when you are doing it right. But if you ever consider to do such a business, like I mentioned to you, to have it under Schedule C as a sole proprietor is not a good idea because you always are getting into the area where hobbies versus business, it become a judgment call. And you saw that the difference even from IRS is not so black and white, right? It has a lot of, you know, so what did what the auditor gonna ask you? The auditor gonna ask you, do you intend to make money out of peanut? And if it is a business, your answer should be yes. If it is not a business and you don't care, so that is, but who doesn't want to make money out of nothing or everything? So it is difficult to make that judgment call and it is easy for you to lead IRS to the place where they would conclude that your taxes is wrong, you should not deduct anything, and here you go, we conclude that to be hobby. So if you have those kind of thought and a form a company properly, and even if it is so small, even if it is so little, but it's still better than having that sitting on your 1040 and a drawing attentions and unnecessary audit to yourself. Right? Don't forget, IRS got the funding to hire 87,000 new auditors. And one of the um, statistics I saw, they're talking about 87,000 auditors. That means three auditors per business and that they can audit because of the, the amount of audit each auditor can do. So we're talking about a lot of businesses are subject to audit with this kind of um, movement the the White House has so um, just be safe and be clear with what you are doing and we always want to make sure that um, we understand the rules and regulation before we proceed with the business decision you are making or hobby decision that you are making right and if you have any other ideas for us please uh, email Catherine at the Community CPA and you can always, uh, you see Peanut is here and he is like, uh, he just sighed. I think he's like, he knows he's off camera. So uh, we hope that uh, you have a good weekend. And one more thing I want to remind you and just in case you don't know, Community CPA is the only CPA firm that opens on Saturday. If you give us a call on Saturday, a live person would come on and would talk to you and unlike other professional firms is Monday to Friday and we recognize our small business being busy business owners are being busy and so maybe Saturday is the only day they have to talk to professionals so we're here to help you 
All right, have fun and uh, admire my peanut, and uh, he is a great puppy. Talk to you. Bye.